Supersized episode, supersized intro. Just what is the fear of aging all about? From weird injections to cosmetic surgery to fear of just being alone, we get into all of it. Plus some excitement about revisiting music from our past and imagining George Santos in a bathtub full of marinara. Okay, maybe that's just me. Oh, and a couple of things about the two promos in this episode. The first one is for Two Skeptical Chaps, or THE Skeptical Chaps, as they're known now that they have a third chap. Well, we want to send some love to the third chap, Ollie, this week, as he just lost his dad. And if you've ever visited our merch shop and turned off the content filter so you could see the sweary items, you may have noticed the coffee mug festooned with some of Ollie's most delightful vulgarities. Still available! And also, I want to point out the second promo, which is for the Aim for the Head podcast, and let you know that while they're waiting on the spin-off Walking Dead universe shows to come back, they're reviewing The Last of Us right now. And I write in to them every week, so if you want to know what I think about how delicious Pedro Pascal is, that is the best place to find out. Okay, off you go. Welcome to Pitney and Amelia's Bitchin' Boutique. We may be awful, but But we're we're right. Okay, so, Amelia, we're on video right now. Do you see my fabulous shirt? It says, in the end. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Okay, if you could see, there's dates on it. Okay. But what it is... It is in the end, the Linkin Park song, and the date on it is the release date of the very first Linkin Park album. Oh, okay. Because I got this at a happenstance tribute concert that I went to last weekend. Oh, when you when you were out the other night and you were just walking down the street and oh my god, a Lincoln Park tribute that yeah, night. Yeah, so yes. I went to and the funny thing about it is so I went to the San Jose Art Walk, which I've been wanting to go to forever, but mm-hmm. I can't because I close. I'm designated closer at work. Well, you're every important. Friday night. Yeah, but because I had had vacation time last week. On a trip that I couldn't take because of, you know, people that I was going to go see had COVID. Right. I was like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to take my vacation and go do some shit. So I decided I was going to go to the art walk. Um, But the funny thing is, before we go into the concert, um, because it was the art walk and I hadn't gone for so long, I decided that I was going to dress up like I was going to a con. Okay. Well, so it's been a I while had, since we got to dress like that. You know, black baggy pants on with my Ren Fair boots <laughs> and this long stripy coat with like gold braiding across the front that I had bought, you know, oh, at your, Spirit. Oh, um, your uh, dancing in the graveyard coat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, I and I actually got so many compliments on that coat. Well, that coat so I, is so fucking badass. Yeah, so I need to start wearing it. But anyway, yes, so as we are walking down First Street, we go by this club called The Ritz, which is like an old movie theater, but it's like a rock club now, right? Right. And what do I see but a sign that says the Lincoln Park Experience in the end? <laughs> And I was like, oh, my fucking God, that's tonight. Oh, my God, that's in, like, 90 minutes. I'm going. Oh, my God. You know, so my friends I was with, I was like, I love you. I'm sorry, but I'm totally ditching you because I'm going to this. And there's, yeah, because they were no, there's no way. Because it's Lincoln Park. And they were like, oh, my God, yeah, totally go. It's totally no problem because we know, like, what a big fan you are. And they didn't go and, oh, they would have hated it. Yeah, yeah. But, oh my God, it was heaven. It was fabulous. And I was far enough away 
that I couldn't really see what they really looked like. So could you, like, pretend? Which was good, yes, because (laughs) it wasn't just, like, I'd seen, like, two, no, three different bands that were doing all Linkin Park sets back in the day, like, right when Chester died. And there were oh, all yeah. those trip. There were all those tributes. Yeah, yeah. Because I'd gone to the one in Austin, San Antonio, and Dallas. Right. Or no, no, no. I'm sorry. Austin, San Antonio, and Houston. Okay. Um, and they just played Lincoln Park songs, but this is like a band that does like they dress like them, they move like them. Right. The guy that played Mike Shinoda, like dressed like Mike Shinoda, had Mike Shinoda's guitar. The same beard, the hat. It's like going to a Kiss tribute back in the yes. day. Yes. And from the distance, because they fucking moved like the members of Linkin Park. Right. It was almost like I was really seeing Mike Shinoda, you know? Yes. They were awesome. And they did, uh, you know, quote unquote, you know, deep cuts. Right. For the fans, which I thought was really awesome. Well, I'm, I'm guessing they're, because they're trying to replicate, like, actually going to a Linkin Park show. So they yeah. would do what Linkin Park would do. Yeah. Yeah. And it was fucking awesome. But anyway, I had a really, really good time. And I actually made some friends. I actually ended up hanging out with these people in line. Um, It was a father, two sons, and uh, a wife. And we were talking and talking and talking about Linkin Park and geeking out. So we get up in the line and I see the sign at the box office. Cash only, no cards. ATM inside. And I was like, fuck, I don't have cash. Yeah, who carries cash? I mean, it was only 20 bucks, but it's like, I don't have a fucking 20. I maybe have, like, a dollar, maybe. It's like, fuck. Okay, let me go see if they're going to let me in. And they were, you know. Like, to go to the ATM, right. Yeah, and they were like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll just buy your ticket and just buy us a couple beers. Oh, my God, that's so cool. And I'm like, oh, okay, sure, because they'll take, of course, they're going to take a card at the bar at the venue, right? Right. Because they want to so make I money. bought a round of beers for all of us, and I ended up hanging out with those people the whole night, had a great time, and in fact, uh, the father texted me to ask me if I wanted to go to a Van Halen tribute this weekend in Fresno. <laughs> oh my God! And I was like, oh, thank you so much for thinking of me, and it's awesome. Please invite me to something again. I'll totally go, but I just can't this weekend. A Van Halen tribute would be fun. That would I be fun. Actually, I would know the songs, and I would actually love it and have fun. On another weekend, yes. Absolutely. But I'm not going to go to Fresno, because I kind of always hated Van Halen. Although, but now I appreciate their music now, and I would have fun. Oh, it's totally different if it's not Van Halen and it's But now. I'm yeah. not going to go to Fresno. Yeah. But what I am going to do tonight, I'm going to the Ritz again, <laughs> and I'm going to see a tribute show for The Cure. <laughs> Because, you know, oh back God. in the 80s and the 90s, I was a big fan. I know. And I've seen The Real Cure three times. Oh, my God. Um, So I'm excited. Um, I'm oh going to go. God. I'm going to go by myself again. And, you know, I'll end up meeting people because I'm a chatty kind of person, right? Can you imagine? Back then, though, you would have never... You would have never gone to something by yourself. That's This is huge. Oh, yeah, because don't you remember, it was a big... We've talked about this on a really early episode of this show. I don't know if you remember, but it was a big breakthrough after me and mm-hmm. broke up. It was a big fucking deal for me to be able to the, go to the grocery store by myself. Oh, yeah. 
I literally couldn't. Oh yeah, because you you would you would be like, what if someone saw me? I know. I would have like it's these like, anxiety they, attacks. They wouldn't. They would think, oh look, some guy buying groceries. No one would give a shit. Because lots of people are in the grocery Nobody store. Nobody would give a shit, but it panicked me. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. God, I could have never have gone to a show by myself. But, oh, my God, I'm going by myself. And it's excited. <laughs> and I just pray, please do not them let them perform anything recorded after 1992. Oh, I, I'm really, really hoping that because it's a tribute show that they stick to an era. And I hope you're absolutely right. I hope that it's the cure from the 80s and yeah, only the cure from I the 80s. Yeah, because I know they're still, they still record albums now. But oh my God, no one cares. I don't want to hear anything after Disintegration. Yeah, because... If you're doing a tribute to The Cure, if you want to hear The Cure now, you'd go see The Cure now. If you yeah. want to go to a Cure tribute, it's because you want to go back in time. Yeah, and if they want to sing, you know, the asinine Friday I'm in Love song, because it was a big hit, that's fine. But other than that, I want nothing after Disintegration, so we'll see what happens. I but I'm excited. I hope they sing Love Cats five times in a row. Oh, my God. I want them to do Love Cats. And, you know, my, my favorite, my favorite. Like a 30-minute version of Love Cats. My favorite Cure song is, is is In Between Days. Do you remember that one? Oh, the, I Yesterday think. I felt so old. I felt like I could die. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And, oh my, oh my God, I could just go on and on, but I'm not. No, I'm I not going to go because I could go on and on because, oh my God, those albums I've listened to over and over and over. But I know my favorite Cure song ever is, and I know it was a big hit, and this is not good cachet as a fan because how dare my favorite song be a hit, right? But really, my favorite song by The Cure ever is Just Like Heaven. Oh, that's such a good song. It's such a fucking good song. It's such a good song. Oh, my God. And you know they're going to play it. Oh, and, and the crowd's going to go insane. And I'm going to dance my fucking ass off. <laughs> okay, I have to ask a very, very important question. A very important question. And I know everyone listening is on the edge of their seat. What are you going to wear? I don't fucking know. Oh my god, dude, this is very important. You are going I to see actually something adjacent to the cure. <laughs> I wear? actually think that that weird ass coat that I wore mistakenly to Lincoln Park would be appropriate for the cure. And it's cold, so yeah, totally wear that again. So I think I'm gonna wear black linen pants. Uh huh. And I have a pair of black boots. Mm -hmm. Like black work boots. Sure. But they'll be like, the pants will be over, but it'll be black because I don't have docks anymore. Right. My black dress shirt, and I actually have a black vest. Oh my God. A black brocade vest. Do you still have your black, uh, your priest shirt? Do you still have no, that? No, I don't. I oh. wish I did. That would look but, so yeah. good with that coat. <laughs> yeah, but I think I'm going to wear like a black dress shirt with my black brocade vest over it with the black trousers, with the black boots, with the coat. That would be so awesome. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And I love it. Am I going to do makeup? No. I know there will be fans there in pasty white face and black eyeliner, but honey, I'm not doing that because I'm bald. Well, you know, the best way to get makeup is to find some cute guy who's wearing black lipstick and make out with him. And oh, then yeah. that's how you end I up with makeup. Like, Ooh, honey, put some eyeliner on me. But yeah, no, I'm not doing it myself. Yeah. You just get someone else's makeup smeared on your face. That's the oh, best But yeah, way. I'm totally... <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm really excited. Um, I'm a little bit wary because the opening act is a quote-unquote... DJ, which horrifies me now because it's usually like EDM trance fucking horse shit that I despise. 
But if he's paired with a cure act. But I'm hoping if it is DJ pure, you know, paired yeah. with that, then it's going to be something that I like. I mean, what if it's Jamie Jupiter? I mean, <laughs> oh my it could God, be. Oh my God. Yes. I mean, it could be someone truly badass. It could be, you know. Because I remember when I went, you know, when I went to see Mika in San Francisco. Yeah. His opener was some DJ. And I don't know who the fuck he is because I don't go to clubs anymore. Right. But he was like some big fucking deal DJ. And it was all this new modern EDM shit that I just don't like. Yeah. Um. So that's gonna be interesting, but you know, but I'll have fun. I'll bop around and I'll have fun and I'll talk to people. You'll and, find you the know. other people who aren't interested in what the DJ is doing. Yeah, that's what that'll be fun. And it's gonna be interesting. I don't know if this is gonna happen, but I have a little bit of a fantasy that because I was so involved in that scene back in the day. <gasps> in San Jose, I may run into people that I haven't seen in years. Oh my god, everyone who used to hang out at the Upstart Crow is going to be Yeah, there. the Upstart Crow or, you know, the club One Step Beyond. Oh my god. You know, you know I ain't going to be the only one from that scene. So it's going to be fun. Oh my I'm really god. excited about it, yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god, like I... I can only think of a few people that that I would know of that would be from there, and it's like, oh, I, oh, I can't wait to hear like if you do run into certain people. I'm, yeah, so I'm just like it's gonna be fun. I'm totally gonna go. Oh it's God. gonna be fun. I have to say, I had a I had a thought when when you were talking about wearing makeup. I just I had this image in my head. That, of course, the worst person in the world wouldn't be there because he lives here and not there. But you know, if the worst person in the world what went to a Cure tribute show, oh, <laughs> which he would totally think that he oh, would have he the right totally to do, would go. Yes, he would totally be under the impression that he would have the right to go to something like that. You know that he would not only have makeup on. But that he would have some configuration of makeup that he would insist was some sort of stage accurate makeup that Robert Smith wore on a certain tour uh, and so, you know, and he would insist that he was perfectly replicating something. Oh, I know. It'd be and- from this one <laughs> show in May of 1986 in Lancaster, where he only did it once. <laughs> and, and he would be, and it would be something that like, no, and, and he would have like, he would be insisting. And of course it would be like, Unlike anything anyone had ever seen Robert Smith do before, oh, because of yeah. course it would be complete <laughs> horseshit. Oh yeah, but he, but because he has, he always had to present himself as, oh no, well you just don't understand because you're not as big a fan as I am. Ugh. You don't know because you're you know. He's always like the, he's the collector. He's the biggest fan. He's the only one who knows anything. And that's why, you know, you only think I look stupid because you aren't as smart as yeah, me. Like, he's he's <laughs> the like, king, no, you look stupid. He's because... the king Kunta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, why didn't we just name him King Kunta when we started the show? <laughs> to give them a thing spike we can give them a drop that they could plan out their yes, shows yes I think we've uh, got to find some time and get get time to do, do that I think we should do it right now I think we should do it right now look I'll show you how easy it is Spike. <laughs> watch this I'm just going to do it live okay do it live like that bloke screams I'm just going to do it live watch this hi this is Dr. Dan from the two skeptical Sh- I can't do it now <laughs> look, I can't speak too much pressure right, I'll try again I'll try again I'll try again take 52 hi this is Dr. Dan from the two skeptical chaps podcast and you are listening 
to the most bitchin' boutique. See? That was easy, wasn't it? Okay. They could send us one, we could play it in ass. Yeah, you know? yeah. Right, you do it. Yeah. Right, off What you do go. you want me to say? Whatever, whatever comes to mind. Hi, this is Spike from the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast, who ain't no bitch, but you're listening to The Bitchin' Boutique. Oh, that was good. I think I hope they use that. Let's see if they cut it and put it in their next show. <laughs> Diplomatic community. love what is bitching with me Ooh, okay because <laughs> man when when this little when this little tidbit came into my life a few days ago i was i was so tickled i was just so very tickled and um i oh man you know how I mean, both of us have been quite amused in recent weeks at just what a lying sack of shit George Santos is. Oh my God, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And anyone who follows um, our social media, I hope you've been enjoying how I've been, uh, although I don't think I've done it on our Facebook yet, but definitely on Instagram and Twitter, how I've been um, posting how how George Santos uh, has that dewy, apple-cheeked countenance of a young Wayne Newton. Um, uh, because I, I won't stop pointing that out to people. Yeah, because yes, and he... <laughs> it's delightful what how much he resembles a young Wayne Newton. Um, some, but every so often a new, a, a new weird thing about George Santos comes up. Like just like um, right, right before this one, uh, I found out that uh, he claimed to be one of the producers of the Spider-Man musical Turn On the Night. Remember the Broadway musical about Spider-Man? Oh, it was a horrible, yeah, horrible yeah, failure. yeah, 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 I do. And I thought that was going to be the funniest thing. But no, this is my favorite. Um, here's, a, uh, here's a headline from Business Insider. Um, George Santos' campaign spent more than $26,000 at an Italian restaurant in Queens. That's enough to buy 1,131 orders of the rigatoni bolognese. Uh. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, apparently, Il Bacco Ristorante Italiano in Queens, they somehow, over the course of him running, his campaign office spent... Twenty six thousand and thirty two dollars and six cents at that restaurant, according to and, cam- and according to campaign cents. and six cents according to campaign <laughs> finance disclosures, <laughs> and apparently they still uh, he still owes the restaurant another eighteen thousand seven hundred seventy three dollars and fifty four cents for a campaign election night event. What the fuck? Oh my- God. Like, there's no... So his total Italian food expenditure with this restaurant is over $44,000. And oh we don't God. know yet um, 32 separate expenditures uh, list as things like dinner meetings, fundraising event, food and drink expenses. We don't know specifically what all this money was spent on, but... That is so much money for one restaurant. Oh my god, that is insane. But it better be fabulous. I mean, it just I mean, I hope it's all for him. I hope that he just ate that much Italian food. That he ate that much ravioli. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and I love that this article particularly, you know, broke it down into like that much money could buy 2002 of the $13 Caesar salads or (laughs) 1,735 margarita pizzas or 3,718 cannolis. Uh, (laughs) Like, I love that they broke it down. You know, it's just like, it just, it thrilled me. Like my, my, like my imagination. Like, do you think I, I can't help but imagine him ordering just a vat of ravioli just so he can roll around in it. 
I mean, I maybe guess that's he had his all skincare regimen. There. Oh, I just don't know. Oh my god. Maybe that's maybe that's how he keeps his skin so dewy and plump. Is he just eats a lot of Italian food? You know, because God damn it, it's like it's my, he's he's such a lying, ugly, ugly piece of shit. He's he's fascinating. But oh yeah, no no, I'm totally fascinated. But he's such an ugly lying piece of shit, but he also that he exists actually gives me a little bit of hope. Because the fact that he was elected as a Republican and gay actually gives me hope. Assuming that he actually is. I'm still... I Well, that's the debate, yeah. That's the thing. Like, he... I mean... But the fact he, that he he's made He's denying this fiction, the drag that shit. Was, that he was gay and blah, 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 as far as the voters knew, and that they still voted him in as a Republican, that actually gives me a little bit of hope. In a, but my, my curiosity is such that... Is his betrayal going to be for conser- more conservative voters? I should say more conservative like, voters, like right? Like, th- once they know just how gay he is. Yeah, like, like oh, like, well, yeah. that's how those gays are. They're just big fucking liars. And I, you know what I mean? I, I hope that doesn't backtrack on that. Yeah, because it does know. make me wonder, because, like, I didn't know who the fuck he was until he got voted in, so I don't know what people knew about him when they voted for him. So, it's it's so hard to say. But, like, I... I cannot... It just keeps getting better. And, and, for, and for anyone who... For anyone who doesn't understand compulsive liars... My first boyfriend was a compulsive liar. And the thing the thing that makes compulsive lying what the reason why you would tend to believe a compulsive liar at first is because the stuff they lie about is so dumb. Why would anyone lie about that? Like mm-hmm. why would someone lie about being really really good at volleyball in some shitty little university no one's ever heard of? Like what there's just the stuff that he lies about is stuff nobody would lie about. Oh yeah. I so, know. So that's the kind of thing that, you know, it's like, well, nobody would lie about that. So it must be true. Like my first boyfriend who, who totally claimed to be the cousin of Peter Tork from the monkeys. Oh, I was just going to tell you that. Cause didn't he claim to he was on tour with the monkeys? He absolutely <laughs> did. And that, that was, see, that was, that was his mistake because there was all these, all this video evidence, all these, all this, you know, footage from that tour. And he would go, see, that's me right there. And it's like, but it's not, you know, <laughs> that, see, that was, that's where, that's, if you can, easily prove that he's full of shit. I couldn't prove he wasn't Peter Tork's cousin, but I could prove that wasn't him on stage oh with Peter Tork. Oh my god. I know, it's so funny. People... In a room well, full of you people. you know me, you know. like, I look exactly like Paul Stanley in the makeup, and I... So that was me on the Creatures of the Night tour, Exactly. You know? Who, who's gonna say no? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Which I don't, but I'm just saying, you know. But you look, but you look pretty damn close. Although that remember that time when we went to emos, we were so popular. Oh my god, that woman, that woman, remember she was like, "You are just the embodiment of Paul Stanley," or whatever the fuck she said. And I was like, "Oh, honey, you're we, bugging up the wrong tree." We both could have had any women we wanted that night. Ah, uh, no, really weird. it was fabulous. We yeah. could have had our pick of any woman <laughs> in that place. <laughs> As weird as that is. Oh, all the women that I could have fucked, you know. And I had that I one could woman have been, who was I could point- have been the King Kunta. Oh, my God. And that woman who was pointing at my codpiece and going, what's in there? And I go, pillow stuffing and my car keys. Right. And then she was like, bitch, you know I'm a woman, right? 
like, I mean, if the tits don't give it away, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, stu- I wouldn't stuff the top with this much padding to make myself have these enormous tits to make to be Gene Simmons. I mean, obviously the tits are. Well, we had you pretty well padded down, but I don't think it was that convincing. I mean, there's only so much squishing you can do. Yeah. I mean. But I still have. A very visual memory that makes me giggle of wrapping you in this of, of wrapping me in saran wrap to try and make my boobs as flattened as possible. Yeah, you're the only person who's ever gotten to see that. And I can only imagine how uncomfortable physically that must have been for you. I feel really bad for uh, like all the drag queens because saran wrap and duct tape is is the the drag queen you know corset, you know I really feel bad for everybody who's ever used that, you know for shapewear. Oh my god! Do you remember the, I the, the first the first drag show when my ex was Sissy Joe Swindler? Yes. We did the duct tape to make a little bit of cake cleavage. To make the cleavage, yeah. And I remember not even thinking about it. Like, oh, it's just fucking, you know, duct tape, whatever. The just taking ripping off. ripping that shit. And I, we, I fucking ripped skin off of him. Oh, God. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't put, like, plastic wrap underneath it? You just no, did tape? No, we just did straight on tape. Oh, he knew better. All the research he did with drag queens, he knew better than that. Oh, yeah, but we did that, and oh, my God, that poor motherfucker had, like, skin ripped off his back. (laughs) I'm surprised he didn't lose a nipple. Oh, my God. (laughs) Poor thing. (sighs) Oh, Lord have mercy. Anyway. And that wasn't for very much cleavage, either. I mean, that's a lot of pain to go through for not much uh, Yeah, but, you know, we were trying to we were trying to keep it real. Oh, I know. Keep that it was... real as fake, you know. Yeah, well, you know, drag You know, because we weren't drag is real pain. drag queens. We were just pretending to be real drag queens. It was an excellent drag show. Yeah, which is interesting, though. It's like we're... Yeah. Anyway, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> but that was, so, yeah, George Santos, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of Italian food. That's, that's, that's what made me, that's what made me giggle this week. Very happy. Oh, I'm so fascinated by him. <laughs> I think I'm going to write it, you know, because he's going to, you know, he's going to get kicked off the, what is it, House, Senate, what the fuck? He's in the house. Okay, he's, he's in the house. Who did you hear? Kicked... Did you see Mitt Romney tell him you shouldn't be here? Did you see that? Oh, I did. I did. That made me really happy. It's like Mitt Romney. I mean, you're, you're, he's still he's still a pig, but but every so often he'll do something honorable, and that was good. Uh, yeah, but and you of know, course I... I'm sure George. I'm sure George took that as yeah. I shouldn't be here. I should be on Broadway. Oh God. <laughs> So yeah, see, I want to. So I'm gonna call him up, George Santos. When, once he once he gets kicked out, because you know he's in the process of getting kicked the fuck out, right? I've I've heard that there's lots of different yeah. campaigns to remove him. Yeah. So I'm gonna call him up, and I'm gonna be like, "All right, you have no way of making money now. So what you're gonna do? And I will manage your career. And what you're gonna do?" Is you're going to become a lesbian Wayne Newton impersonator. Oh, he needs to be a drag king. He would be. Yes. So, yes. I mean, Wayne can't, can't, Wayne doesn't look like Wayne anymore. So, yeah, George so needs he to... is, got, yeah, I want him to be a lesbian Wayne Newton impersonator. Because, yeah, no, that was a thing in the 70s, apparently. Absolutely. Absolutely. I bet he has a beautiful singing voice. What could his, like, drag name be as Wayne Newton? What was, what was Wayne's th- uh, thing? What was his uh, name when he, when he, the, the logo with the feather? Was it the Midnight? Oh, the Midnight Idol. So something, something, something that would go with that. Oh, God. So he would, so he, <laughs> so he would, it would be, it would go with the feather. 
<laughs> and George could grow a little mustache. <laughs> and he could be like pretend to be a lesbian being a Wayne Newton impersonator. That's his future. Or it could be um um he could be moon, moon over moon over Naples. Moon <laughs> over Naples. Oh. Uh, moon o- <laughs> I'm trying to do Wayne songs, but turn them into a woman's name. <laughs> I know, yeah. Moon over Naples, light your way to me. <laughs> Nobody knows that song but us. <laughs> I don't even think Wayne remembers that song. Oh, God. <laughs> But anyway, God, remember that time, remember that time when you came back from Guatemala and I had recorded the Wayne Newton concert off of some TV channel that was Wayne performing in Branson and he did MacArthur Park, uh, he did MacArthur Park in Branson and it was raining on stage. Yes, yes, I totally remember that. And it was the most dramatic thing that has ever been captured on film. Oh, my God, I thought I was going to come five times in my jeans. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne. People just don't know. Wayne is amazing. Oh, my God, do you think George Santos could play the banjo and the trumpet? If he's going to be Wayne, he needs to learn. George Santos, start learning the banjo. And he needs to learn the trumpet solo from Leather from New Orleans. (laughs) Remember how I I have a very vivid visual of you making fun of that trumpet solo. Just like. (laughs) I can't. <laughs> What's bitchin' Brittany? Okay, so this week, my What's bitchin' for Pitney? What's bitchin', Mr. Pitney? This week, I have gone through a couple different things, but I have decided. Because of two different events this week. One, which we talked about earlier, um, me going to the Lincoln Park tribute. Right. The second being the release of a long lost single that was going to be put out on the Lincoln Park Meteor album. Yes, yes. Seriously, an amazing, amazing fucking album. Um, Because I read about that and was excited about the single and everything coming out. My bitchin' has to be Meteora by Linkin Park. Okay. Because... Now, what year would that album be? When? How long ago was that? Uh, shit. I want to say 2013, 2012, 2013. So it's like 20 years ago. Yeah. Oh, no, that would be 10 years ago. 2013? God, is it? I think it's just celebrating its... 2013 is 10 years ago. Oh my god, I think I read that it was celebrating its 20th anniversary, but that can't possibly be right, huh? That's 2003. 2003 was when Clay Aiken was on American Idol. Oh, 2003! Yeah, yeah, 2003. Yeah, 2003. Yeah, because Clay Aiken and and Ruben Studdard are doing a 20th anniversary tour. Oh my god, yeah, I'm just trying to, like, picture back, because I remember... Living next to you, mm-hmm. and playing that album. I mean, I, you hadn't moved in next to me yet when American Idol was happening because I was still living on that side. Yeah, but yeah, but no, but I have a specific memory of that album because I remember pl- living next door to you and having a party, 
and playing that album and our friend D going to the stereo and turning it down, being like, oh, this is too loud. <laughs> See, and back then you could have been playing them all the time and I had no idea. Cause oh I my didn't... fucking God, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so Meteora and because I, you know, it's like I I listen to a lot of their music even now, but I don't necessarily listen to albums. I listen to like lists or whatever. Or I, you know what I mean. I don't think of specific albums. Like, oh, I'm going to put on this album. I just, you know, right. But the press about this album has made me think about that album, and so I've been listening to that album as a whole. And I just fucking realize how fabulous it is. I mean, that album is like Joni Mitchell level of diary to me. Okay. Every song, every lyric is Joni Mitchell level of diary. And I've been listening to the fuck out of it. And it's made me weepy sometimes all over again over Chester's death. Right. Because, you know, that could have been me. You know, if I didn't have therapy, if I didn't have my mom supporting me after my suicide attempts and stuff, if I did not have you, yeah, that could have been fucking me. Right. You know, and the angst and the despair and the reality and the lyrics of that album, they were not trite meanings to be fashionable at the time. That was really him speaking. Okay. And so I reevaluated the value of that album. And the reason why I say this is because, you know, that album, you know, the first album was like very rap metal, very, you know, new metal, quote unquote, NU metal. Okay. Um, And even though it's a fabulous album, the first album is sort of dated because it's that new metal kind of shit. But Meteor being their second album, there's a little bit of that, but they started becoming more of themselves. So I don't think it classifies as that dated new metal shit. Yeah, first so it, albums are frequently, we got a record deal and there's a producer and we have to do what they tell us because yeah. they're letting us be in the studio and they're letting us do this. Yeah. Yeah, so I think this was like, anyway, and it's just like almost like me on my spiritual journey. It's still like, okay, I'm not this. And I'm really angsty, and I'm really fucked up, and I'm really pathetic. But I'm moving towards this. Okay. And you can see that in the progression of their albums. Yeah. Both musically and lyrically. Mm-hmm. And that album just really, really, really resonates with me. And so my bitchin' is rediscovering the Meteor album by Linkin Park, not just as a nostalgia thing for something I used to love, but also something that can speak to me now and help me grow. Does that make sense? Because it's talking to you now as opposed to the way yeah, it talked to you then. Yeah, and yeah. it talked to me then, but it's talking to me in a different way now. Okay. So this um this new this track that they're releasing now this is just something that was like something that got recorded for that album but it, it was didn't, recorded it didn't get for on that, that album. album and it never made the cut I never made the cut <laughs> right as, as an album cut um I still haven't listened to it all the way through um Twitter went because, insane the day they released it. Yeah. Everyone's saying it's really good. So I'm because assuming you're going to love it. I need to be in a state where I can listen to it and focus on it 
Because, I mean, I know, I mean, dorky, geeky, whatever the fuck is you may say about this, it's going to make me fucking cry. Oh, sure. And I have to be in the right state of mind to listen to it. I have not been there yet. But because of the hype around it, I've been listening to that album again. And, yeah. you know... So yeah, that's my bitchin' is Meteora by Linkin Park. Very cool. Now there's about 20 of them out there. What will we do? Don't worry, we're safe in here. They'll never get in. Why is it that in every zombie story, people always think that their safe haven is invulnerable? I know. It's like, hello, the walkers are totally going to get in. You better get ready for it. <laughs> Diane, get behind me. No, it's not stopping. Do something, Jack. And another thing. How come nobody in a zombie story has ever seen a zombie story? Do you know how much time in human life would be saved if just one person in the group was up on the genre? What do we do? Aim, Aim for, for the, the head. head. What? Aim, Aim for, for the, the head. head. You heard them. Aim for the head. Quick, Diane. I think we should try and fix the barricades. I think we should listen to them. Now that's the first good idea they've had all episode. I still don't think they're going to make it. Aim for the Head, a weekly podcast covering the hit AMC programs The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead. Join hosts Diana and Steve as they recap and discuss the latest episodes. Aim for the Head, available on iTunes. You can also follow them on Facebook. So, God, a couple weeks ago, this set me off. Um, I know you don't really know who Chelsea Handler is. She's a comedian, actress kind of person. And she had her own TV show for a bit. I think right now, I think this week, she's one of the temporary guest hosts for The Daily Show this week. But a couple weeks back, I think she may have been on someone's podcast or something. I think the reason why this became like a blurb that became a headline was because she just sort of casually mentioned this. Because obviously when you're on a podcast, you're just talking and you say all kinds of things. And then all it takes is someone to take one thing, one sentence that you said and say, Pitney said this. Oh, and yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, thank God no one cares what we say. Cause, I, I know, know cause, oh my God, you never know. And if we become famous in the future... God only knows how many fires we're going to have to put out. <laughs> well, you know, by that time, who, I mean, oh my God, we're just going to, we're going to be, you know, we all, we already know people are just going to consider us to be just monstrous. So, oh, I know. And I'm going to be like, bitch, I'm Madonna. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay. So, so. The the headline that was going around was that Chelsea Handler had no idea that she was taking Ozempic because, as she said, her doctor just gives it to everybody. Okay. And that set me off in particular because, um... Now, off the top of your head, do you know what Ozempic is? I was just going to ask you, like, what the fuck is that? I've seen the commercial, but right. I don't know what it is. The reason, yes, if you if you know it at all, you know it has an annoying commercial because it has that, oh, 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 Ozempic yes. commercial. Yes, the, yes. The reason why I know it is because for a six-week period, a little ways back, my husband was on it. It is a diabetes medication. Okay. Okay. She has no goddamn reason to have been on it. But here's the thing. Um, because I... That got my attention because... And, and the other thing that I know about it, because he was on it, not only do I know it's a diabetes medication, it's an injectable. It's a shot you give yourself. Oh, it did is, he have to do that? He he did it for six weeks. 
Oh, girl. And it is okay. it is such strong medication that it is a shot he gave himself once a week for sh- for six weeks. It is it's that strong, and in only six weeks, it did so much to him that he only needed it for six weeks, and then he never took it again. Like there are some people who are on it long term, and that shocks me because of how what a strong effect it had on his blood sugar and stuff in only six weeks. I mean, it's powerful. I mean, imagine any kind of medication that if you had one shot once a week and that was enough medication for you, how strong that medication would have to be. So I looked at the articles that were going around to see what, you know, if she said more than that. And I found out that I found out two things. One, and I will get back to this one, it, the doctor that gave it to her, um, was her anti-aging doctor. And we will go back to this, but the reason why, wait, that's the thing. Apparently, and that's that's the thing I'm going to get back to. But the reason, uh, the, okay. and that's just that's okay. just that's infuriating okay. to me that that's a whole category of medicine apparently now. But the reason why, but apparently, while I was looking into this, I found out that Ozempic, which is actual medicine that people with diabetes need, we go through periods where there is actual shortages of Ozempic, where people who need it cannot get it. And then there's people like Chelsea Handler who are being given Ozempic who don't fucking need it. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that apparently the reason why people are being given it is to lose a bunch of weight real fast. Like if in, in, in the case of someone like her, and I'm not saying that the reason why she had it was specifically this, but this would be why someone like her would get it. If you ha- if she has like a red carpet event that she needs to go to in a couple of weeks and she would like to be 20 pounds lighter so that she can fit into a dress she can't fit into right now for that specific event on that day. If she starts injecting herself with Ozempic right now, she can be a different weight on that day and fit into that dress. Oh, really? Because... Now, even though my husband was already on another medication and he was already losing weight because we were in the early stages of the diabetes diagnosis and we were doing all these other changes and all this other... Plus, before he was even diagnosed, he was losing weight anyway because of the diabetes because diabetes does things to your body. Yeah, I remember that. But I remembered the diet changes and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I so I cannot say how much weight he lost due to the Ozempic because there was so much else going on. But obviously there are people who are being given it for the purpose of losing weight, because that is one of the things that it does. But what I read and I, and I don't want to go down this path because this will, because this also infuriates me. Um, when, when I found out that there were shortages and I was like, wait, there's so many rich, famous people being given Ozempic for no reason that they're causing a shortage. So I went down that path and, and there was this doctor saying, no, 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 that's not why we're just prescribing it more because there's so many obese people who need to lose weight. That's why we're prescribing it more. And it's like, I'm sorry, are those people needing to lose weight because they're sick? Because that's not an illness. Or is it just yeah. because someone decided someone needs to weigh a different number on the oh, scale? Oh, yeah, because some stupid bitch wants to fit into a size two. Yeah, yeah. it's like, even even if someone is my size and someone else has decided they need to be smaller, that is not an illness that needs to be treated with medication. That It's like... Leave the medication for someone like my husband who has an illness that needs yeah. to be treated with medication. Anyway, back to the anti-aging. Yes. So it was it, the reason why she didn't know that she was taking this was because she's on so many different medications from her anti-aging doctor that she just takes whatever 
fucking pill and whatever fucking shot this guy gives her because she's so obsessed with I can't look any older, whatever that means. And that just sets me off in general. And I know that my attitude towards aging might be warped because my mother didn't have an attitude towards aging because when she turned 40, she still had a baby, you know? And when she turned 50, her youngest kid was still in elementary school. And when she turned 60, her youngest kid graduated from college that year. And she said, okay, now maybe I'm old. Maybe. But she didn't, but nobody thought she seemed old at 60. Yeah, because this is like your mom, and I knew her well, you know. I knew your mom well. Um, she's like my mom. They don't. They've. They did not look their age. Right. Mom didn't look old till she got sick. Then and she I was suddenly became say, a little old lady. Old people look like, when people say, like, oh, my God, old lady, oh, my God, old man, that is usually people that are sick. Yeah, people who are sick and, like, 90. Generally, people in their 70s, 80s, or even 90s, sometimes even 90s. Yeah. They don't look old. Not to me. When people talk about how Joe Biden is so old, it's like... What's, what's the oldest person you know if Joe Biden seems so old yeah. to you? He's 80. That's not, you know. And actually, he's remember, not even 80. He's just in his 70s, right? Yeah. Oh, he's no. Not, I think No, I think he's going to be 80, I think. He's just in his late 70s. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember, like, I took care of this woman named Patricia. She had had a bad stroke in her 60s. And she was in the nursing home because she was like, you know, she needed to be in the nursing home, right? God bless her. She was only 70 when she died. But if you looked at her, like, and I, I, I'm, I'm illustrating this for the point that I think you're trying to make, right? If you looked at this woman that I took care of because of her health, And because of what had been going on, she was only 70 when she died. But the quality of her skin, her hair, her, I mean, just like her physical qualities, it really did make her look like she was one of my residents that were well pushing fucking 90. Right. Because she was sick. Because she was dying. Yes. You know, whereas like my mother, who is going to turn 90 in three weeks. Right. People are amazed that she's over 70. Right. When my mom was in the hospital. Because she's healthy and her skin looks good. And her, and it's, I don't even think it's the skin. I mean, I'm not a doctor and I, I, this is just my hypothetical thing, right? Right. I mean, when it's like diet, hydration, because you don't have dementia and you're not sick, so you're eating good. And I think it's because of health. Right. When my mom was in the hospital getting her hip replaced, which um, most people get their hip replaced because they fall down and break a hip. My mom got a hip replaced because she wore down all the cartilage in her hip and she walked around with no fucking cartilage in her hip for two years and barely winced. Like she didn't say anything to anybody because she was like, oh, I think I have a pulled muscle in my thigh. And like, because my mom had like pain tolerance that no one could understand. And like mom never said anything when she's walking around with no, I mean, just everyone just imagine having no cartilage in your hip for a minute and how much that would fucking hurt. So my mom's walking around like that for years. So she gets her, she gets her hip replaced. As soon as she wakes up from the surgery and she's in her regular hospital room, she gets up and gets out of bed and walks into the bathroom, sets off all the alarms because she's not supposed to do that. Yay! (laughs) <laughs> and they're all, all these nurses are rushing in there thinking she fell out of the bed. And she's like, what? I had to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And she's like, bitch, 
I'm gonna go take a piss. Fuck and off. and they're all like, "Well, doesn't it hurt?" And she goes, "It hurts." Let like they literally cut her bone apart and put a, a like a titanium hip in her like hours before. And she says, "It hurts less now than it did when I walked in here this morning." She's like, "I feel great." And, Fabulous. Yes. And and people were always going like. Wait, how old are you? And uh, she she was like, "What? I'm like 68." And and she, and they're like, "I don't believe you." And she's like, "You want to see my driver's license?" She she was just like, "What? I'm 68. What?" You oh know? my god, and that's young. Yeah. But that's the stock I come from. Like, yeah, and and yeah. it's not so much that she looked young for her age. It's that she it's that she wasn't old because 68 is not super old and there's nothing like when i turned 30 who gives a shit when i turned 40 who gives a shit when i turned 50 who gives a shit you know it's like i am the age that i am and also what is the alternative to aging not being here yeah, That's exactly. Th- and, you know, we've talked about this before. We are both people who could have very easily not survived our 20s. Uh, yeah, oh God, yeah. And so we're kind of both people who... God, I just talked about this a few minutes ago in this yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah. You For know, different we... reasons, but right. yeah. But, like, we we both for had many, many opportunities for at various times to have to not be here right now. So the fact that we're here right now, the age that I am good for me. Look at me. I'm still here. Hooray. Why the fuck would I agonize over how old I am? I mean, I, I will never, I mean, granted, there's a lot of things about me and the rest of the world where I just do not understand other people. Yeah. But being afraid of getting older is really something I don't get. And being and being afraid of looking my age, who cares? Well, honey, you're right. I was thrilled when my hair turned gray. <laughs> you know the number one thing people can do if they're worried about looking older? Gain some goddamn weight. <laughs> That's true. Because you know, you know the the yeah. reason why my mom suddenly looked really really old when she got sick it's because she went from 190 pounds to 120 pounds really fast that's true that's true nothing nothing you know it's called natural filler having some fat under your skin it's why it's why it's why the fat drag queens are always always look so much younger and prettier and more feminine because they have (laughs) fat under their skin it's a little tip that's why people are always so shocked i'm as old as i am well that and the blue hair but still (laughs) Yeah, so let me interrupt you. Let yeah. me ask you this. Do you or have you had any fear of getting old? Because I do. Fear of getting old? And I'll now, tell you why, but I want to hear what your answer is first. You, you know, because you're roughly the same age as me, you know. Right. Um, um, so do you have fear of that? F- fear of, now when you say fear of getting old, do you mean fear of being old? Like old, like elderly? I think what I mean is, okay, so I remember, you know, being a gay man, people are like, oh my god, when you 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 turn 30 and it's all over. And I was just really like, whatever. Right. Well, we also lived dur- th- right. during a period where a lot of a lot of gay men didn't have the yeah. luxury of growing old, oh, yeah. so hooray for everyone who and made then, it. And then, oh, when you're 40, you're so old. It's like, shut oh, the fuck up. Oh, you're the creepy up. old guy at the, at the bar. Yeah. yeah. Because mm-hmm. I remember my 20s, 30s, 40s, I was still, you know, socially active, 
sexually active. Yeah. I was still doing everything that I was still doing. I was going to cons and going to rent fairs and doing costumes and doing my hobbies. And yes, I was also working and had my life and I was able to sustain my own life, right? Mm -hmm. And I think with a lot of straight people, maybe I'm wrong, but I think with a lot of straight people, a fear of aging is a little bit different because the responsibilities that come with a marriage and a family and children, right? Which I don't have. You know, they're like, oh, well, I wish I could still do this, but I can't because of yada, 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 yada. You know, and it's just like, oh, if I was younger, I could have done this. And it was like, no, it's not because if you were younger, it's because if... Because you made a decision to change the kind of life It's because if your life, life was have. different. It's because your life was different. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm not making a value judgment or a, that's... But what, what does is. that have to do with age, though? Yeah, so what, what I was leading up to was that... You know, when I turned 30, I didn't give a fuck. 30, didn't, 40. I, 50, I didn't even give a fuck. You know, but now that 55 I'm... 55 is different? Now that I'm here living with my mom, and it's not even that 55 is different per se, but living with my mom and seeing that how she's slowing down in the context of having worked with elderly people right for the you know the last 13 years of my working life right um made me be like i don't ever want to fucking do that i don't ever want to fucking go there i would so rather... it's it's about being being that yeah age i want to have and... a heart attack and fucking die before i get to that point but i realize it's not even about the age my mother is just gonna turn 90 in three mm -hmm. weeks you she just don't want to be dependent like on somebody doing her goddamn shit she's out there doing her shit I've ter taken care of people that have been died of dementia at 73. Right. But the, but those people were dependent on you. And your they mom is dependent, dependent on you now. And they yes. were old. And they died of old age. And the weird thing is I've seen people in their 70s die of old age. Right. And my mom now, going to be 90, she ain't near or nowhere close to that. Right. Um, so in my perspective now, I've lived my whole life not caring because my life has been always, you know, costumes, rent fairs, concerts, conventions, parties, right. drinking, smoking, sex. The age hasn't affected any of the thing that people think old age has affected. Right. My fear is if I have to give that up, a.k.a. my whole life, that's my fear. My old age is giving, my fear of old age is giving that up. Because I worked in nursing homes for 15 years. And what struck me most of anything, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Parents, caregivers, nurses, administrators, I don't give a fuck. There ain't no fucking quality of life in a nursing home. Right. My fear is that I don't want to be there. I want to have a heart attack and fucking die before that. That's my age fear. I don't. Oh, I definitely want to die in my sleep in my yeah. own bed. Yeah, but 
But I mean, I don't care about getting gray or getting old or not being attractive or any of this shit. I just don't want to be no quality of life with dementia in a nursing home. I want to fucking have a heart attack and die. Or God damn it, if I feel myself getting to that point, you bet your fucking ass I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy so much heroin, it would knock your fucking socks off. And I'm, oh, yeah. And I'm going to be blasting my kiss music at 75 years old or 62 years old, depending on how I feel. And go out on your own. And I'm going to be yeah. like, here is five, five fucking hits of heroin, bitch. <laughs> and I'd be as high as a kite and then fucking die. Because I ain't living in a nursing home like if I've had to take care of people. That's my fear of age. Yeah, my 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 problem is being someone who I think being in a position where uh I'm of the generation that is now required at all times to be the caregivers of the older generation and constantly hearing the older generation saying how great it is Aren't we lucky we had daughters? The the my father and his sisters saying, "Isn't it great that we had daughters because they take care of us and they do such a good job of taking care of us?" Yeah. Because they, you know, they they all had between the three of them, they had 10 daughters and you know, where all the daughters are taking care of them and none of them are having to live in a home and none of them are having, to, you know, and it's just like, oh, it's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work that all of us are doing. And it does, it does make me think, you know, I definitely get the very strong feeling that there are people who have kids for the purpose of making sure that someone was going to be there to take care of them later. Oh yeah. And I definitely oh, yeah. feel like I definitely feel some days that that is why I was born was for the purpose of making an old man dinner sometimes. Oh, I know. Um, and I know that because because I am not someone who had children, that not having children means that there is not a built-in someone's going to take care of me. And Yeah, that's what I was trying... That scares me. Yeah. So, that is a... That is one of the things that, you know, I tell my husband all the time, is that we owe it to each other to not exacerbate any health problems because I am not going to put him in a position, you know, I, I did not marry him so that he's going to spend his later years wiping my ass. Oh, I totally think either euthanasia or suicide packs need to be a mandatory thing in marriage. I yeah I think um, note my words mandatory. It's like neither of us should have you know neither of us are qualified to be the healthcare worker that takes care of the other one. Neither of us are qualified to oh yeah, be the nurse of the and other I one. think. away from why the hell is why the hell are women afraid to let their skin wrinkle a little bit but it's all fear of aging but it's it's fear of like letting people know how old you are like what like I have to be 26 for the rest of my life yeah, it's because, like no, everyone you know, knows 
everyone knows you've been around for a while, especially if you're a celebrity and you've been around for more than, let's say, 10 years. It's like, well, we all know you weren't 15 when you got well, here, yeah, so think, we know you're over 30. I think for celebrities, they're afraid they're going to lose job opportunities. And well, for everybody else, they think they're not going to be able to fuck the man they want to fuck at the bar. And I think that's, it's those two things. Oh my God. I don't think it goes beyond that. I really don't. The, the problem is, the man you want to fuck at the bar, I mean, I can fuck the man you want to fuck at the bar. So, what the hell are you putting yourself through? But I really for? think that's what it is. They want to fuck the it's man It's like, that man you want to fuck at the, at the bar, bar, he'll fuck anybody. Yeah, he's going to be like, oh, <laughs> she's going to go after my Botox fish lips. Over a real 18-year-old drunk sorority whore. Yeah. Bitch, the drunk sorority whore is going to win for that Oh God! 10 minutes of pleasure. <laughs> oh, assuming, assuming that guy's going to last that long. Yeah, I mean... Six minutes? I mean, back, Six minutes? <laughs> I mean, I had, you know, back in the day, I had I had guys who, who couldn't even get their pants off before they were done because... I know, and Because I had, I had it, them so worked up, they could... I, I, my sex life was yeah. so disappointing. But I think that's with this plastic surgery and ages and bullshit is all about. They want fucking dick. Or if they don't want dick... These, they want the perception of dick. These fucking <laughs> celebrities that don't want to lose the fact they've already made twenty million dollars last year. Like they don't need any more goddamn money. Like fucking Rihanna. Oh, she's gonna play plastic surgery to look like she's you know twenty two instead of twenty eight, so she can make you know, ten more million dollars. Fuck that bitch. She already oh, has she's, she I, already I, has enough. I don't really know anything. Her about music her. is shit and I just hate her. I don't her. know her well enough to hate her. Her I don't music know is, is shit and she's a whore and I I'm hate not gonna her. go that far. That. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna hate someone I don't know. That's my opinion. I mean I'm gonna wrong, reserve okay. I'm gonna reserve uh all my vitriol this week for people like um I'm just gonna say, um Madonna, honey, don't don't assume that if someone has an opinion about the fact that you look like a cartoon trout now that it's about ageism and sexism. It's like, no, you decided to inflate your head like a balloon um, oh. because you put so much filler in your face, you look like a pillow with a lips. Girl, yes, preach, girl, preach. She, she's so fucking hideous that the cameras at the Grammys would not get within 20 feet of her. Like, she, the whole time she was on stage, the cameras stayed at the other end of the room. They wouldn't even come near her because they didn't want to scare the children at home, I think. Woo, preach! And, um, you know, whatever the fuck she was saying, it, I, I couldn't even, like, when I went, because I, like, I heard, oh, Madonna was at the Grammys and she introduced, uh, you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, I, I'm going to watch that clip. And then I'm like, Who's that speck on stage? Are they gonna show? Are they gonna show her? And then I'm like, oh no, they're not gonna show her because she looks so fucking stupid. It's like, is she? Is she? Is she gonna have to wear a bag on her head now so she can be seen in public? Like this is horrible. And apparently, um, if anyone dares say anything against her, it's oh no, you're not being a feminist now because you're not allowed to say anything critical about what a woman looks like. Oh no, yes I can. Yes I can. Oh, someone, girl, yes. It because is so if funny. Because she's not allowed to do that when her message has always been express yourself and be who you are and be proud of who you are and stand up for yourself. It's like you are not allowed to do that. And we have we have talked about Madonna before. God damn it, we have ripped oh, Madonna to shreds yeah. multiple times. 
And it's like, Madonna, honey, you need therapy, girl. I know. This is funny because this is one of the things I made notes about that I wanted to talk about. Oh, my God. Fucking Madonna. It always comes back to shut the fuck up, Madonna. You know, I am a lifelong Madonna fan. You know that. Absolutely. Um, but God damn it. Her lips are stupid. Her cheeks are stupid. She doesn't even look human um, anymore. Her hair, so fucking stupid. Oh, it looks so We gross. can't even talk about how stupid her hair was, but her fucking lips, those goddamn fucking fish lips, no good on anybody. Fucking stupid. Like, what kind of filler? Are, are they using, like, like construction-grade spackle? Oh, what are they using God. in there? Oh, my God. But, you know, what bothers me about it is that my admiration for her was always been, she was, like, such a huge gay activist. And she was sexually rebellious rebellious at a time where it was valid and actual, actually controversial. Right. She now, was using it as a way of scaring the hell out of the squares. Yeah. yeah. It was like a valid thing back then, but she has come a parody of herself, and you what know, bothers me is like... It does make me wonder, because she did, you know, she's her, you know, a lot of what she was was about shocking people and being controversial. And But that always seemed to be like a side gig, but not the primary gig, you know. But now it seems like, has she gotten to the point where all she can do is be shocking? And that's what's making me really question... My fandom of her now. Like she doesn't like she doesn't have anything else left, so all she it's like it's like yeah, now that she's she completely just rebuilt to be her head. Shocking and that's was she always just trying to be shocking and she was just like Oh, I'm gonna support the faggots because it's gonna get me press. Was she always that way? Because now now that she's rebuilt her That's head, harsh, right? But it that's is very making harsh. me wonder. That's really seriously I'm wondering that though. But she's okay, so like she's had it's like the next time we see her, will she have had let's say one of her legs amputated below the knee because it would shock people? Because she's running out of shit to do. Oh, and then she's like, oh, I really want to be able to dance like a whore that's 25 years old rather than being myself, you but know. She can't, but she can't, so what she's going to do is she's going to amputate her legs and uh, now she's just going to be uh, a trapeze artist with no legs. Yeah. Because she's she's literally running out of shtick. And she has to come up with new shtick. Yeah, so I don't know. So I'm going to give the devil's advocate before we close. Oh, God. I'm going to give the devil's advocate before we close. Because I re- I read a couple quotes from her regarding... You oh, know, the recent... The reaction to her appearance, which is fucking... <laughs> her reaction to us going, what the hell happened to your fucking head? Fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Um... You know, but she said stuff to the effect of, you know, I've always been shocking and I've always been controversial and I'm not going to stop doing what I want to do and I will make my face how I want to make it and I will dress how I want to make how I want to dress. Okay. And I was like, well, yeah, that's great and well and valid and fabulous, right? Um, but I'm wondering, like, that's totally valid. So are we just misjudging her by she's being so horrible? But I would think. But is she, but is she actually saying, 
look, bitch, I went into a doctor and I said, this is what I want my face to look like. This is what I want to look like now. So this is what I like. And so fuck you if you don't like it. She's not saying that. Yeah. She's saying you guys have harsh beauty standards and how dare you be mean to me. Yeah, and I want to do what I want to do. And I think that's awesome. But on the other hand, yeah, I feel like I, I don't know where the sincerity is and where the... Because to me, if she was sincere... This is just, okay, this is my bias, right? This if is my If she's saying, bias. I went in for surgery and they messed up and this is as good as I can look right now and you guys are hurting my feelings, that's what, that, that would make me feel a little bit bad. Yeah. But she's not saying that. And she's also not saying, hey, I think I look good. I went in there and asked for exactly this and this is what they gave me. That would be like Michael Jackson being like, Oh, don't I look good? And everybody be as like, a, as no, his nose you is falling look off. Like shit. Right. Exactly. I thought about Michael Jackson today, actually. I thought about how Michael Jackson was trying to make himself look like Peter Pan with that little weird pointy nose. Oh god and, damn it. And it's like he was obviously going for a look and he was failing miserably. If she is obviously going for a look and she's trying to look like the incredible Mr. Limpet or whatever the fuck she's trying to go for. Well, like, she wants to look like why, Don Knotts as a fish. You know, if she's like so empowered and so blah, 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 why doesn't she just leave herself the fuck alone? But and if, look if, she, like if she's doing she it on purpose, then just tell us. Just... I'm doing it on purpose. Let her music evolve as her age evolves, and that would be so much more valid, right? But if this if this is her new way of, I'm reinventing myself like I do with every album, I have to have a new look. And it's like, then buy a hat! No, but it's not that. What it is, is she wants to be valid, and she wants to have horrible, stupid dance music, that's played in the faggot bars. And I'm sorry, that music is fucking shit. And it's always but, been shit. But and that that's what she wants to do. But that's not her face. I'm talking about her face. But I'm saying... I don't care about her music. But I've I'm never saying her, her music. face goes along with that. Because, because there ain't nobody that. old that's going to be making that shitty music. It has to be young people making that shitty music. But you do you think she thinks she looks young? You know, I mean, you can't make shitty Rihanna music unless you're young and shitty like Rihanna, you know? I... But do you do you honestly think she thinks she looks young, or do you think she's trying to look like an alien? I think she just thinks she's trying to make herself look like she could fit in a pop world that she doesn't fit in anymore. Oh man, I I just some there's some severe dysmorphia going on if she's looking in the mirror and going, "Yep, this is just what I wanted to look like." Or, yeah. or, or if she looks in the mirror and says, you know what, I need more filler. Because, my God, her head looks like a balloon. Yes, great, girl, great. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy our show, please take a moment to rate and review us wherever you listen. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone, Everyone loves stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. She can't look she can't look at her daughter. She can't look at Lourdes and then look at herself and go, Yep, I look just like that. Oh my god, Lourdes is such a hideous whore. I is hate she? her. I haven't, I haven't seen her in a long time. I but. just
despise her. She looks like such a whore and such a bitch. Well, the last time I saw she her looks was like a very a long bitch. time ago, and I thought she looked like her mom. And I've read interviews with her, and oh my god, she is such a fucking bitch. Well, she looks like oh, I she looks her. just like her mother. Doesn't she look like a bitch? She looks just like her mother. Yeah. <laughs>